Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, grasshoppers. As promised, in the chess informant article given in chess base, Fisher is seen here, Stadier. The game floor at Georgiou versus Ulf Anderson in Las Palmas 1972. Now this is obviously in the era of his World Chess Championship match. He is studying the informant in 1972. Now, Giorgio had beaten Fisher in the early 1960s using a patented Giorgio variation against the ultra-solid Nimzo Indian variation. Now, Giorgio specialized in playing F3. This is called the Giorgio variation in many opening manuals today. Now, there is another school of thought that calls it the Kamak variation, I believe. But in general, because Georgiou played this so religiously, and he was such a strong and promising young player, it is not without doubt that he favored F3 systems. So, for example, against Ulf Anderson, he begins with E4 in 1972. And in this particular system, he ends up in a queen's pawn game that transposes to a great extent toward a king's Indian. And even today, one of the most difficult and stubborn variations the king's Indian players have to face is the same as variation. You have to choose how you are going to act or react to this. And one of those variations, of course, is the burn variation. Now, of course, black could have castled here, but instead chose to move a6. White develops accordingly. After all, he was securing his bishop with f3 against any possibilities of playing, of black playing knight to g4. So much like the English attack of today. So now we've transposed a little bit into a Pano variation. Oscar Pano of Argentina, Argentinian Grandmaster, famous in his own right, played this system against the King's Indian, not necessarily just the same-ish, but uh, primarily against the same-ish with Knight c6 and a6, and with a planned e5. But usually Pano played it after Black Castle. However, here, White continues developing, reinforcing his d4 square, and in accordance with the Pano concepts, Black continues with Rook to b8, threatening to play b5. Now, let me just reorder something here very quickly. Our timer has to be at the top. If I can find our steadier timer, there it is. There we go. Let's find that timer and we will trim it up just a little bit. There we go. That way it won't be blocking Ulf uh, Florin too greatly. So back to our opening. Basically, White has constructed a very large center made out of pawns, and this is really a wall of pawns 
against an opening that plans on fighting against the center later. This King's Indian defense has quite the task ahead of him. The King's Indian player has quite the task ahead of him in battling against white center. Now, personally, I have also played the same mission in a lot of in several forms for specific purposes. And queen to d2 is the next most logical move. Black finally transposes to the main lines. And in fact, they call this the Pano Variation Main Line with the Informant Encyclopedia Code E84. The Encyclopedia Informant Code is relatively still relevant today as it is a classification of systems going after, going about trying to make openings easier to study and to categorize. And in this particular position, there are several moves that might have been played. We're going to start here with a quick 30-second break for candidate moves. Now, in this first one, the introduction is that you will try to find several moves for white. In other words, it's like panning for gold in the gold rush days, the California gold rush days of early, early America. Basically, you scoop up all of the good moves in the position. In this case, it might involve a rook move, a pawn move, a king move, and or use your mental calculation and analytical energy only once you've scooped up all of the good moves in the position to sift and sort which of those moves you feel will be the best possible moves. And in that manner, once you do this in accordance with studying a game, you will actually be able to align yourself more closely with the mind of a strong player. So in this particular consideration, we're going to give it 30 seconds. If you're watching this video on demand, of course, you can pause the video, take the time to write down three moves or five, if you so desire. But most of the time in a practical game, we don't really have time to analyze more than three or four really good moves. And circle the best move that you might want to play. Now, if you wrote down the move, said, D5 G4 very nicely done, very nicely done. Now, before we embark on a plan like G4 Nico, we might wish to fix the center, which is why d5 is the best of the three. Rook to d1 has also been played, and depending on how black goes about uh, reacting to this in the center, white may choose. And we're going to take a look to see what happens here after knight a5. Moves such as knight to c1 have been tried by Belyovsky. Not necessarily in this position, but with the idea of playing knight to b3 and exchanging off that knight on the side of the board and reinforcing the center and opening up possibly a target on a6 should black ever play the move b5. Congratulations, Nico. Since it was the first move in his series, I would almost also call it a hole-in-one. Now you'll see that we cannot play the move b4 because there's an immediate assault on our c4 pawn, so Ulf Anderson is counterattacking the best he can against white's center and preparing to undermine the white squares with the move b5 and or c6. So Florent Giorgio supports his center and furthers his kingside assault with the help of the knight going to g3. At this moment, black chooses to try to lock up the center, and this could slow down the game in his favor or... In actuality, perhaps speed it up in white's favor as now white can push through with h5. Black is still angling for his break on the queen side with the locked fixed center. And one more time, we might want to consider all of white's best moves in this position. However, Ulf does not play the best move in the position, which might be b3 or bishop to g5. Instead, 
He plays the move bishop to h6, which is an extremely logical human move. After all, in the dragon, Sicilian, and many others, we might exchange off that bishop and plow down the h-file after exchanging our h-pawn. After exchanging our h-pawn for the bishop uh, uh, for the g-pawn and opening up the h-file. In any event, Black does not necessarily seemingly react in the best possible way as he invites the queen in, but this is indeed perhaps the best defense. Some consideration might have been given to knight e8, reinforcing the center and trying to bring the queen in to defend as well. However, after the move, Queen h6, black continues very, very consistently with the move b5. Now, he's not at all worried about the breakthrough. After all, the knight is guarding the square h7, and white does have to decide in what manner he's going to continue while getting his king safe. He chooses bishop to e2. Now, remember, this is the game that Bobby Fischer is studying in the photograph. From in chess informant number 13, we have the chess informant here. Chess informant number 13, from the best games from, I imagine that it is the first half of 1972. And informant 14 should have the best games from the second half of 1972. Today they come out three times a year every four months. We'll give chess informant another shout out. The current chess informant is 158, the one that I'm commonly most often doing studies for in my preparation for Iceland. So in any event, in this particular example, black plays queen to e7. And after, the, and after white castles, this seems almost crazy, right? Perhaps he might have had a better move, but he is just routinely planning. Now, the position is still roughly even. Neither side has a definitive advantage, and by that I mean not equal, as in the position is drawn, because that is a result. Try to always think in terms of equal chances for both sides. So it's at this moment what Black chooses, once again, to play the best move. Ulf Anderson was a relative machine. He's planning on battening down the hatches on that side of the board. And we will give ourselves some considerations for candidate moves for white here for 30 seconds. Remember, you're scooping up all the good moves, as in the California Gold Rush, sifting and sorting all the soot by the side of the river trying to determine if there is gold nearby if any of the moves happen to be worth anything resembling an investment of money into and time into your variation I know it seems rushed on stream but if you're watching this again and I do recommend that you watch it again. And I do recommend that you play through the variations of a game several times through in order to acclimatize yourself to the coordination of the pieces as played by Master. Ace takes G. Absolutely. There were three moves that were considered here. A couple of pawn moves, possibly a knight move. We might actually try to play knight f1, knight g3. Sorry, knight e3, knight g4, or g4, g5. It's very slow, though. Can't see anything else, tbh. Well, remember, George Yu is one of the best players in the world, and he chooses to move f4. Now, albeit... Pawn breaks are the soul of chess. Pawn breaks open lines for bishops. Pawn breaks open files for rooks. And pawn breaks ensure the gain of space, hopefully by clearing the path for other pawns. 
Philidor may have said that pawns are the soul of chess, but I like to paraphrase that greatly by saying pawn breaks are the soul of chess. By moving pawns and staking out space with pawns, you provide outposts for Daily your squares. Daily said, Hey John the first just realized it's Super Bowl Sunday, no sleep for the day zero. <laughs> Indeed, I have $150 in a pool. And I'm thinking that I should have invested more. Now, of course, black does not necessarily react the best way. Perhaps the best way for black to react was knight takes c4. But instead, he chose e takes f4, allowing, once again, a similar queen move that might have been considered in the previous move, Nico. Queen to e3, h takes g6, and f4 were the three best moves in the position. However, there's no reason to delay the move. F4, E takes F4, Queen takes F4, and now Black seeks some exchanges. I can absolutely see this defensive master choosing to try to exchange off White's dangerous attacking pieces. Candidate moves for White. We're going to get as many of these in as we can, while we can. This is primarily done for our YouTube channel, if you are watching. And if you wish to watch all of the previous Informant 158, 1,000 Best of the Best Golden Games studies. Eric Ido said, my first instinct was E5, B4, Q, X, F4 was that no good. <laughs> Eric Ido said before. Oh. Eric Ido said not B4. Indeed. Indeed. E5 before queen takes F4. I got you. His first instinct was to play E5 before capturing back on... Uh, on f4 but it's hard to say uh, we will return to that perhaps but I think that the simplest approach is not to sacrifice on the unnecessary material on your path to the win Fisher was never really a believer in that and I can see why Fisher was studying George U's game so closely because George U was one only probably the only player younger than Fisher to beat him in the early 1960s with the Georgiou variation against the Nimzo Indian. So in any event, here, White chooses to shore up the attack on the F-file with Rook on D to F1, allowing the exchange of queens and how one might wonder, is this attack going to succeed? Well, Black does find a way to barnacle against all future incursions with the move F6. Perhaps he could have tried to achieve some form of counterplay. This might have been best, reserving an active defense, but Ulf Anderson wasn't that kind of a player. Ulf Anderson instead plays F6, and after H takes G6, H takes G6. We are able to double rooks now on the H file. Black decides to make a run for it with King F7. Rook to H7 check. Knight to G7. Remember, there is no... And now, for the key position that Fisher might be studying in that diagram from the Chess Informant article. Candidate moves for white. Chess Informant has long been the periodical of professionals. Now I get to play E5. Eric Ido said, or BH5. Nico de Onios BH5. NH5, BH5, B3. NH5, Nico. said, I'm going to give away material somehow. 
Indeed, but now that all the pieces are primed and in our attacking positions, now that we are completely ready, we can consider the move that shocked the world and, of course, secures perhaps the greatest advantage. Knight h5, by the way, two thumbs up. C takes b5, two thumbs up. Even knight f5 works out really, really, really well. Knight f5 also is in the top five. But Georgiou, of course, goes for the clearance as Arikido announced, and that way this knight might be able to enter the fray as well. And certainly after the move, D takes E5. Knight on C to E4. Black kind of goes into purely defensive mode here. Unfortunately, he is desperate, desperately, desperately hoping. I'm going to return it to our 30 seconds as we go for candidate moves for white in this position. Remember, we're trying to think like and match wits with Florin Georgiou, one of the prodigies of his day from Romania, Romanian grandmaster. It is not enough just to play the best move as recommended by Stockfish or uh, another grandmaster in their analysis after studying quietly in their den. Said, I would still look at NH5 and BH5 first. I would still look at NH5 and BH5 first. Absolutely. Florent Jojo weighs this up very, very carefully. And uh, although the moves Rook F1, C takes B5 are also equally promising, maybe even Rook on 1 to H6. George Yu goes immediately toward the clobbering with knight h5, and one can already see the pressure that is building on the knight on g7. If that knight is taken, bishop takes h5, king to g8, bishop g6, all but ensures black getting checkmated. So, as it turns out, Black chooses the capture, and after Bishop takes h5, the king runs for it. After all, he's going to return the material and seek safety on the other side of the board. Georgiou opens the file for the rook on the first rank to join the fray. Black seeks some form of counterplay. But of course, the game is all but over as checkmate in two moves is threatened. On F takes E4, Rook takes a D7, Rook to C7 check, and when the king comes back, the last Rook comes into place with checkmate. So therefore, Black makes one last valiant effort to try to hold out. And the final nail in the coffin, candidate moves for white. It's no secret. This has been a presentation of Chess Informant number 13, game number 705, Georgiou versus Anderson's Las Palmas, 1972. And... BXF5 must be. Eric Kidul said. NF6 works, I think. Knight F6, Knight D6. Georgiou actually chose to move Knight to G5, which forced resignation as after knight d6 which i just mentioned white gets to force through the checkmate with knight to e6 check and after d takes e6 it's almost impossible to stop all of the threats first threat nf6 nd6 rd7 doesn't t work 
Let's take a quick peek. Elikido said, O N D six guards F five. Now remember, this does work. It's just not as efficient as Georgiou's response because by going to E6, he brings in another attacker. This does work. It is winning. It may take a little bit more effort and time, but knight to F6, I'm sorry, knight to G5 followed by knight to D6 pretty much forces checkmate. And therefore, Black had to resign. He didn't see any defense against the Rooks dominating the seventh rank. After this, he can try to throw material in the way, but it will be to no avail as uh, this is going to be pretty fatal. The checkmate is coming. Thank you all for being here. Elikido said, Yet NG5 is real clean. This has been a, uh, an homage to Chess Informant number 13. The latest Chess Informant is number 158. They have bolstered the Chess Informant with fewer games without annotations, and half of the book contains articles on recent events and historical articles and instructional op options on openings, middle games, and end games. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe to the YouTube. And have a terrifically great evening, day, as we raid Lilla. When I see your face, there's not a thing that I would change. Cause you're amazing, just the way you are. Making and sure I spell it the right way. The whole world stops and stands for. I will be back, if there is time, in another 20 to 30 minutes with another instructional stream. More than likely, I will be doing the game Fisher as Black versus George Yu in the game that we just discussed. Fisher's youngest opponent, uh, youngest successful opponent, destroyed him. Cheers and ciao, everyone. Thank you for being here. Eric Kido, Nico Demonius, Case Money, Dark Blade, Namaste, Khalif. Cheers and ciao, everyone. Don't even bother asking if you look okay. You know I'll say when I see your face. There's not. Ah, this is freaking bad. Master just.